Hello everybody, Peter of England here. Um, I had no intention of delivering this video as I'm going to present it now. However, I've been toing and froing on the idea for the last three or four days since this Supreme Court decision was uh, delivered um, in the United Kingdom concerning the, the uh, per perogment of Parliament. Um, I've seen a lot of comments, I've seen a lot of uh, nonsense being broadcast in the media, and I've heard a lot of expressions and people on talk radio coming out with all sorts of ideas. So, this video is really today addressed and wants to be delivered to what's called the Remainer faction. The people who actually voted to leave the European Union are probably the most sensible individuals one could imagine, because they see the true operation and the true perspective of what's called the Brussels business and the globalist New World Order agenda. However, as far as the Remainers are concerned, what they do not realise is that they are falling in or have already fallen into one of the major, most incredible domestic uh, democratic traps imaginable. So I'm going to start with the House of Lords verdict, then I'm going to work along through the parliamentary aspect, and then I'm going to finish with um, some overall ideas about the dangers to the Remainer faction's ideology, um, which is very pertinent to them. So, if you're a Remainer, if you're primarily a Remainer, then you should watch this video through to the end. So, first of all, Remainers, let me begin by saying what you are dancing with. You are dancing with the devil. The devil comes in the form of Lady Hale's delivery of a verdict of the Supreme Court, which is nothing but a VAT-registered private corporation, which has had its name changed from the House of the Law Lords to the Supreme Court to fit in and marry up with the Tony Blair, New World Order, Democratic, Blue Lodge, Masonic agenda for a one world government. That is, a one world government with you as the worker ant with no rights of, of uh, address, no rights of, of, of dictating policy and no right to control your own life. A world in which everything you see and you think is pre-programmed for you by either your Google glasses or your Hawaii Chinese pho uh, made phone. So that's what's being delivered on the back of the Remainer uh, um, uh, perspective for you to stay in the European Union. Let's look at some of the, the background, the deeper detail, the esoteric knowledge which you people need to grasp within this, uh, this melee, within this dog's breakfast of three and a half years of toing and froing, where you're still as confused as the day you, you, you made the vote. And as far as the Remainers are concerned, the only good thing they're going to get about the remaining agenda is the pretty blue flag with the 13 stars on it and the euro currency. But we'll come to that about the economic aspects uh, later. So, what do we know about the Supreme Court? First of all, viewers, let's find the day that it was incorporated, i.e. its birthday. Its birthday was the 1st of October 2009, and if you'd like to write that down in numerals, you get 01102009. We seem to have 11 there repeated twice, 9 and 2, 11, and the 1st of the October date giving you an 11. It is no mystery that one of the main protagonist numbers for what's called Solomonic Kabbalistic Numerology, which the, the Satanic Zionists, Crowley Worshipping, Church of Thelema, uh, New World Order bods like to progress under, is the number 11. Yeah? No coincidence of, of the ending of the First World War at 11 minutes past 11 on the 11th of November, etc. We have many uh, aspects of uh, the Lateran Accords, where the founding of um, uh, the Vatican came into being, uh, the Twin Towers, 11, the Euro, the Dollar, the Pound, the Yen, all with 
the two bars through them, number 11, that is a key, it's a key indication of who is controlling the double male energy, which is not the one of unity, but it is the two double male energy of division, and that is the division of the satanic agenda of Satan putting his throne above that of God. So, the many biblical asp aspirations and implications woven within this net. And it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or disbelieve in it. They do, and they are the people who are controlling the magic circle. So, let's have a look. Let's continue. We have a guy called Lord Sales. He is on the Supreme Court. Of the 11 that gave the verdict on that ill-fated day, nine of them were Oxbridge. Yeah, what does that tell you? That Oxbridge means they were either from Oxbridge, Oxford or Cambridge University. Just in members of the aristocracy. Lord Sales was a Blairite appointee. Uh, he was formerly a barrister at what's called Eleven. KBW, which is King's Bench Walk, in, in the city, and that chambers, um, he was responsible for trying to prevent, I defend the government's position, that no inquiry should be lodged against uh, Tony Blair's invasion illegally of Iraq. These are the people you are dealing with. The Supreme Court is a private corporation. It has a vested interest in supporting the elite the 11 justices were operating on something called a spin cycle. What do spiders do? They spin webs. Spin stands for Satanic Polycentric Integrated Network. And Lady Hale, who was the successor to the previous Lord Chief Justice and Head of the Supreme Court, Lord Neuberger, a Zionist Rothschild Jew, she has taken over and delivered a very significant message with that spider sitting on her lapel. Ask yourself this, Remainers, all of you Remainers, if you said to yourself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a piece of jewellery for my wife, yeah? And what it's going to be is it's going to be a spider. How many of them do you think would welcome it and tell you not to take it back? Well, I'm telling you, I think 99 out of 100 would refuse to wear it because it's a bit of a creepy object to have sitting on you, especially as blatant as that was. On such a historic occasion as that as well, and such a public broadcast and knowledge of what was going to be the fallout from that, don't you think that some body the wardrobe girl should have said to Lady Hale, Are you sure, Lady Hale, you want to go out with that thing on your, on your lapel? Doesn't it give some sort of strange message? Well, it does give a strange message because the symbolism of these satanic individuals will be the death of them. And what I would suggest to all of us, once this Brexit nonsense has cleared the air, these people, these traitors in the Supreme Court, these traitors in Parliament, need taking out and given yard-arm justice. Okay, that's a bit of a euphemism for you-know-what. Now, let's look at the intricacies of the case itself. Let's look at some of the antagonists, the proponents, the lovely little chocolate girl from Guyana who was engineered to bring the case. Now, Gina Nadira Singh. Yeah, you got it. Gina Nadira Singh, she is the daughter of the ex-Attorney General of a little place called Guyana. Okay, so she's not even of English descent, and she's there poking her millionaire nose into the business of the people of England who democratically voted to leave the European Union. She's on a third marriage. Her now name is Miller, married to a guy called Alan Miller, who just so happens to be supported, hook, line and sinker, lock, stock and barrel by the Soros Foundation. Alan Miller is presenting himself as a bit of a 
a bit of a light in the city trying to introduce uh, what's called true and fair uh, pricing within unity, unit trust and stocks and purchasing of various investment funds. So he's called it the true and fair foundation, which is anything but. This is one of these clap-trap corporate new world order catch-all phrases which incorporates nothing. It promises everything, but it does exactly the opposite. So, these people are not representative of the people. They are millionaires with vested interests, and if it was you or your next-door neighbour, Remainer, who was trying to bring a case such as this to court, you would have no chance. Gina Miller, yeah? Gina Nadira Singh and the QC who was representing her before the House of Lords in this case and previously in the High Court was called Lord Panic. Are we making this up? Panic, panic, panic. So Lord Panic, a just in Lord talking to 11 other Lords and this is like, well this is like probably two or three chickens sitting down with a fox discussing what's going to be for dinner. Yeah, I think it's a pre, pre, uh, a, a, it's a pre, it's a, a pre, pre gone in, uh, instinct. We know exactly what's going to, a foregone conclusion, I was trying to say. So, um, the verdict delivered by Lady Spider Woman Hale. It's a travesty of justice. She says, it is not about Brexit. Well, if it's not about Brexit, Lady Hale, why are all the Remainers dancing up and down on the, on the steps of uh, Westminster outside Parliament celebrating this supposed overturn of, uh, of the decision by uh, Boris Johnson and his government? Now, bear in mind, everybody's going on and the mainstream media like the BBC and Sky News and The Guardian and Independent and The Washington Post and all these other claptrap, phony, fake media idiots are all going on about, oh, it's because of the prorogation of Parliament, and it shouldn't be done, and it's, it's unprecedented. Well, let me just tell you, let me mention a little beauty for you. In the past 40 years, that's right, 40 years, Parliament has never, ever sat in September. So, with all this kerfuffle by people like John Berkowitz, yep, John Berkowitz, who changed his name to Berko, a Romanian Zionist Jew, we have this ongoing melee in Parliament where 75% good people of the United Kingdom and world listening to this, 75% of the parliamentarians in Westminster are openly for remaining. So, what we have is an agenda that is not representative of the people, designed to frustrate the people, being organised by traitors in powdered wigs in the Supreme Court. Traitors in powdered wigs helping the others, the parliamentarians, to keep us where we don't want to be. So, the European Union is a euphemism. Europhile is a euphemism. All these people who are Europhiles in Parliament, it's a euphemism for traitor. European Union is a euphemism for that corporate, globalist, Nazi-founded hellhole dedicated to the entire destruction of Western civilization by the unelected sweepings of all the foulest, rejected, and worst, and inhuman ideologies ever to decimate mankind. And that's been pulled up into one place, and that is Brussels. That is one world, new world order. So, we have a brown doll, Gina Miller, purposely used as the scapegoat or the individual, the stalking horse, brown because they wanted to head off any appreciation of the fact that if she was challenged then she could just scream racist. Don't forget, her connections with the UK are dubious at most. Her husband is a Soros-funded agent. 
So what we have in effect, and I'm just consulting my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything here, uh, they're claiming that they're defending democracy, but they're doing exactly the opposite. So, in conclusion here, what we have for all of the Remainers that want to stay within the European Union, ask yourself why, apart from the Euro and the pretty flag, let's look at the economic consequences quickly, shall we? We find that Germany now, which was announced only a week or two ago, is close to technical recession. Germany is the driving engine of the entire European Union mechanism. Let's look further afield. Do you think the Greeks want to stay in and the Italians? Countries bankrupt. Do you want the French to stay in? The gilets jaunes on the streets of France? They want out. And there's even a movement in France called Frexit to follow Brexit. The Irish voted to leave. Yeah? The French before voted to leave. The Dutch voted to leave. The Spanish and Portuguese, as I've said before, had their referenda cancelled. Britain got its chance, voted to leave, and three and a half years later, you're still languishing in it. So, Remainers, ask yourself, all the stories of doom and gloom if you stay within the European Union, do you think they're any better if you leave than when you stay? Because at the moment, Europe is on its knees. It's dying on its arse economically. It's bankrupt. Everyone owes money to everyone else. And no one can pick up the bill. Yep. So, that's the message I'm delivering today. I wasn't going to go and do this video, but I thought, to hell with it, it's got to be done. Now, if you like the video, press the button like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Please, post it and send it out to other people. Because the information that I've given you is very, very important. The one thing all you Remainers must wake up to, and for those who aren't esoterically versed, the people who voted to leave too, you need to comprehend that there is an agenda. This is not a conspiracy theory. If you look at what the Trilateral Commission have, have, um, have posted, if you want to know what the, um, the, the other esoteric secret societies, the Rotary Club, the international uh, commercial centres are publishing. They're all putting this together that we're going to a one world commercial enterprise. We're already there. We're just, they just need to, to, shall we say, cross the T's and dot the I's. So it's very important. And if I was a Remainer, once I'd look behind the curtain, as in the film with The Wizard of Oz, I'd be very, very scared as to who I was supporting. Because these people are not your friend, they are not of you, and they have money, they have special interests, and they are the very, very top fractions of 1% who mean you no good. They mean you harm. So, that's enough for now. I'm going to be doing another video soon uh, for all those people who are in financial uh, uh, need or having problems with debt. That's going to follow on because we've had enough and we're going to start bringing meetings back into real life time in the UK uh, beginning October, November 2019 prior to the big globalist push which is going to come down on you, barreling down you like, on like, like a Mack truck in 2020. So, thank you for listening. Peter of England signing off.